Rome. The superpower of the ancient world, its dominion extended from the place where the sun rises to where it sets. In the dusty pages of history, when the calendar showed 133 BC, the mighty king of the Pergamon Kingdom, located in the northern Aegean of modern-day Turkey, Adelos III, closed his eyes for the last time. At the end of the Adelos era, Pergamon experienced waves of silence and shock due to the king's will. Because the last king of Pergamon, Adelos III, bequeathed his kingdom to Rome. This was an unexpected move. Rome couldn't believe that Pergamon's lands were left to them. Despite trying to enter Asia Minor, Anatolia, for a long time but postponing it due to continuous wars, expenses, lack of resources and provisions, Rome took Pergamon without shooting a single arrow. In 129 BC, claiming and receiving legal rights over Pergamon and its city-states, Rome established the province of Asia Minor. It took many years for Rome to fully establish and secure its roots in Asia Minor, Anatolia. Over the ensuing years, thousands of citizens from Rome migrated to cities in Asia Minor such as Ephesus, Pergamon, Miletus, Smyrna, and Sardis. Some came for trade, some for a new life and the passion for wealth, and some because they were the families of Roman officials. They mingled with the local people, merging culturally, linguistically, and religiously. So much so that the local populations began learning and speaking Latin due to Roman rule. However, Rome was a state that was never satisfied with war and new resources. Therefore, it collected taxes from the cities and peoples under its rule and could raise taxes due to continuous wars. Struggling with high taxes for a long time, the people of the Aegean began to say, enough is enough, due to Roman tax collectors filling their pockets and favoritism in daily life, trade, religion, and citizenship. The knife had reached and even cut the bone. Of course, every hero has their own way of dealing with things. Rome, which had been in conflict with King Mithridates, the Sixkin of Pontus, for a long time, had never considered this powerful king. Mithridates was a strong leader, having grown up in the harsh winds of Anatolia, who wanted to establish dominance over Asia for a long time. He started a plan to take advantage of Rome's high oppressive rule over the people of Anatolia. Sending messengers to Asia, he declared that he would campaign over Asia, asked for support, stated that it was time to get rid of the Romans, and that the prominent people of the region should follow his orders. Embarking on a campaign with a large army, Mithridates arrived in Asia, defeating the Roman forces one by one and sweeping away the foreign Romans. The people of Asia increasingly pinned their hopes on Mithridates and sided with him. After the wars, Mithridates entered Ephesus with great splendor and was greeted with celebrations.
However, he saw that the local people had Romanized to such an extent that some wore togas and some spoke Latin. But there was one goal, to cleanse Anatolia of Rome. Mithridates, who was determined to take revenge, assessed the situation and planned with the people of Ephesus. The decision to create this irreversible chain of events was to massacre all Romans in Anatolia. The sun set in Ephesus as usual. Evening came, and everyone withdrew to their homes. It was an ordinary yet quiet evening. The harbor Arcadian Street emptied early, and the Agora was filled with nothing but the sounds of birds and dogs. As night fell over the narrow streets of Ephesus, the city's residents fell into a peaceful sleep. The splendor of Rome echoed through the stone streets of the city, creating an atmosphere of peace and security. However, this peace was nothing more than the calm before the storm. Mithridates' plan had taken shape in the shadows of Ephesus and found resonance in the hearts of the Ephesians burning with the fire of revenge. That night, it seemed even the stars were hidden. Mithridates' soldiers lay in ambush all over the city, waiting silently. The only sound echoing through the stone walls of Ephesus was the eerie hooting of owls breaking the night. The city seemed to take a deep breath on the brink of a great change. The people of Ephesus, crushed under Roman oppression and high taxes, had rekindled their hopes with Mithridates' arrival. At midnight, the Ephesians, silently approaching the Roman houses scattered throughout the city, Mithridates' order was clear and ruthless. The Romans were to be exterminated. With sudden echoes of terror, screams echoed off the stone walls, shattering the silence of Ephesus. Roman women, screaming to protect their children, tried to flee, but merciless swords found them too. The streets of Ephesus were filling with the bodies of Romans. Blood flowed over the stone pavements, creating a horrifying scene in the city. Roman soldiers tried to resist with their swords, but the number and rage were in favor of the Ephesians. In every street, in every house, a bloody struggle took place. Mithridates' soldiers, helping the people of Ephesus, killed the Romans one by one. Women, children, the elderly. Without distinction, everyone was slaughtered. The streets of Ephesus were washed with Roman blood. Some Roman civilians who used their wits and had enough time disguised themselves by removing their togas, Roman clothes and ornaments, and thus, very few escaped. However, even the slaves joined this rebellion, exposing their Roman masters and participating in the massacre themselves, as the Pontic king had promised them freedom. Roman tax collectors were killed by having molten gold poured into their mouths. Those trying to enter the Temple of Artemis, which offered sanctuary by fleeing along Artemis Way from the front of the great theater, were not admitted into the temple. Those who did manage to enter were the first to be expelled and killed right there. The priests of Artemis could do nothing but remain silent. The streets of Ephesus in front of the houses, the marble city and its streams were painted red. The silence of a summer night was suddenly filled with noises and then gave way to boundless silence again. The night seemed endless for those who lived through it. 
dawn was not breaking. The events did not cease, but every night has a daybreak. The dawn broke, and the shimmering rays of the sun from the east slowly struck the marble buildings of Ephesus. For those who survived the night, the scene was terrifying. The city had turned into a graveyard. The bodies of the Romans filled the streets, the stone pavements covered in blood. The people of Ephesus had taken the revenge they had long waited for, but this revenge deeply affected them as well. The smell of blood and death pervaded the city, carried by the soothing breeze from the sea. The events had not only taken place in Ephesus, but in many cities across Asia Minor. Hundreds of thousands of Romans were killed in one night. In Ephesus alone, there were 80,000 dead. For the people of Anatolia, this was a victory. And Mithridates immediately began working to rebuild Ephesus after this victory. However, the streets of the city continued to bear the marks of the massacre. This massacre dealt a heavy blow to the Roman Empire, igniting a significant resistance against Roman rule in Asia Minor. Ephesus had become not just a city, but also a symbol of one of the bloodiest resistances in history. While Mithridates fulfilled his promise of freedom to the people of Anatolia, the Roman Empire's presence in Anatolia was shaken. However, this massacre left deep scars in the memories of the people of Ephesus and Asia Minor, earning an unforgettable place in the dark pages of history. As Mithridates left Ephesus, he left behind a story written in blood. This story would be told for generations, and the screams that echoed in the stone walls of Ephesus would remain silent witnesses of history. Thus, the Ephesus Massacre took its place as an unforgettable story of blood and revenge in the dusty pages of history. History tells us not only stories of victories, but also of losses and sacrifices. The Ephesus Massacre is one of these brutal truths However, this tragedy also shows how strong and resilient the human spirit can be. The people of Ephesus, standing against injustice and oppression, emerged as symbols of courage and resistance on the stage of history. Time beyond victories and defeats holds the collective story of humanity. The painful screams echoing in the streets of Ephesus remind us of the value of justice and freedom. These dark moments of the past will become a beacon of hope for the future, will be told for generations, and will never be forgotten. Two thousand years have passed since then. When you go to Ephesus, reach out and touch a marble. The city still has countless untold stories, and every step you take, every sound you make, on the marble streets and buildings will follow you. Welcome to Secretum, where history's whispers turn into thrilling puzzles. Join us as we crack hidden codes, navigate forbidden archives, and unearth extraordinary truths. Subscribe and unlock the mysteries locked in time. Remember, Secretum. No secret lasts forever.